Uh, Red would have loved to have been here tonight to deliver this uh, medal. Uh, I don't know if I'm the next best person to do this, but I, I dare say I've known Bob Costas is longer, longer than anybody in this room. Uh, uh, go back to 1974 with the Spirits of St. Louis and uh, Myron Holtzman, Bob and I were, were there every night wondering what time Marvin Barnes might show up <laughs> or if he would show up. Uh, after his Spirits days, of course, Bob went on to NBC and, and do Olympics and, and NFL and NBA and, and become the best interviewer in sports and, and beyond. Um, I, I, although I wonder why in those Kentucky cer Derby ceremonies he never interviewed the winning horse. I mean, what's that about? <laughs> <laughs> um, we know that his heart has been with baseball all along and, and he's done these great things in, in postseason play and in overseas and, and whatnot, but I, I, I think his, he would say his one of his best regular season thrills happened in June of 1984 when he and Tony Kubek did the Saturday game of the week in Wrigley Field. And this one hurts for our fans here, I know, but it was a 12 to 11 game won by the Cubs uh, after Ryan Sandberg hit not one but two home runs of Bruce Suter in the ninth and 10th innings to tie the game each time. The Cubs won the game in the 11th. Our uh, newest Hall of Famer managed to allow two runs for the Cubs in the top of the 10th. So that was Sandberg's home run, only tied the game in the bottom of the 10th. <laughs> uh, in that game, Sandberg had five hits and seven RBIs, and, and lost in the shuffle was Willie McGee had four hits, six RBIs, and hit for the cycle. But who remembers that, right? <laughs> um, last year, the National Baseball Hall of Fame honored Bob in ceremonies at Cooperstown, and tonight we honor him with the Red Medal for invaluable service to baseball. I am beyond pleased to receive the Red Medal. It means a great deal to me because Red Shane Deans embodied so much of what is enduringly great about baseball in St. Louis. The history, the generational connections, the unique relationship between the team and its fans. And because Red was such a fixture and such a beloved and, as Rick said, unassuming man, maybe we should take a moment to remind ourselves of his Hall of Fame accomplishments, accomplishments he would never mention. 10 times an All-Star, many seasons batting over 300 with a high of 342. And at various times, he had seasons where he led the league in hits, in doubles, in stolen bases, and in plate appearances. The year he led in plate appearances, he came up 711 times and struck out 27. The game has changed. As you know, Red managed the Cardinals to two pennants in the 60s, and as a coach and special assistant, he was part of all the team's successes in the 80s, 90s, and on into the new century. He was, of course, Stan Musial's longtime teammate and best friend, but he also played with Willie Mays on the Giants and Hank Aaron on the Braves. But of course, he was first and always a cardinal. And in this town, he truly did, as the award says, render invaluable service to baseball. I'm sure I could never meet Red Standard, but I hope I have been a good citizen of the game. I hope that in various ways, I've contributed something to people's enjoyment and appreciation of the greatest game of all, our national pastime. This past year has been a dream come true for me. And outside of Cooperstown, the center of it all has been St. Louis. The Cardinals and the people of St. Louis have, as they have always been, so gracious and so kind, and I will always be grateful. You know, I've gotten to the point where I'm beginning to feel over-honored, but when it's St. Louis, the appreciation is so mutual that, well, when it comes to this town, it never gets old. Thank you all very much.